Last week, in the first of this series of six talks on labor law, we looked at the employer and the rights, and should they join an organization to protect their own rights in this complex world of labor law. Today we look at the employees, and generally those are the ones who seem to be the ones who have, am I right, Michael, the more frequent problems? Absolutely. So let's look at the employee. What, what, what we do, Leslie, is as advisors, we often get employees coming to speak to us at Bagram's Attorneys, and we obviously tell them that before you resign from one job to go on to another, you must get that letter of appointment or the contract of employment. We often tell employees that they should come to us beforehand. Let's have a look at these contracts before you sign them. Those contracts do fortunately govern your employment relationship between yourself and your new employer. Those contracts are also read, not by itself, but with the conditions of service as contained in manuals or books of the new employer. So we have a look at those conditions of service. We often look at the websites of those companies and they have, for instance, codes of conduct. And we have a look at those codes of conduct and see if it fits in with what that employee's expectation is. So we often tell employees, let's have a look, first of all, what is going to govern your relationship and explain to you what's going to govern your relationship. And if you're happy with it, then you can sign it. I mean, for instance, you would see a restraint of trade in an employment contract. And those restraints still hold water today. Many employees think not. The Bush law tells you that it doesn't, but restraints are very good in our law. And if there is a restraint in that employment contract, you will be expected to sign it. And then you'll be expected to adhere to it when you leave. And that's a problem. We also have a look at the benefits contained in that employment contract and we explain it to the employees and explain that as a client they need to understand what they're going to get out, what will cover them, what they're going to get out and then we have a look at the conditions of service itself. Now obviously in letters of appointment or conditions of service employees are often employed on probationary basis. And is this that allowed? Be, that is absolutely allowed and it's a good practice for employers to appoint someone on a probationary basis because once you have a probation you can tell whether you are happy with your new employer and it gives you a way out without any co without causing any fuss. It also unfortunately allows your employer a way out without actually having to go through a rather onerous disciplinary hearing because you have probationary hearings. So probation is a very important concept and it could be anything from one week to six months if not longer. It depends on your acting position. So probation is very important to have a look at. We also ask employees carefully look at the conditions of that contract because you might find that you are being appointed for a term in other words, from day one to day X. A limited term contract. And it is a limited term contract. And many employees tell us they've signed this contract, they're taking a new job, they've resigned from the old one, we have a look at it, and we find it's a six-month contract. And in fact, they've got no rights at the end of that six-month contract because you will find in that conditions of service a clause saying that the employee has no expectation of another contract. And you'll find that we do that for our employers. We put it together. So it, it often helps to wear two caps in this because we know what to look out for when an employee comes to speak to us at Bagram Attorneys. Are you talking about uh, managerial contracts now? Or yes, ordinary managerial, jobs? ordinary. It doesn't ordinary matter jobs. who you are. If you arrive there and you want to work there as a domestic worker and you go in and the new employer, the madam, says, I've got a contract for you. Leave your old job. I'll be paying you more. And you'll see that the contract says six months. Now, most domestic workers are just so excited to earn more, they then don't have a look at the niceties of that contract. And is you it must have a look is at it that. expensive to come and chat to you people about it? It isn't expensive, and especially if you're a domestic worker, we normally can't charge domestic workers anyway, and we do have a booklet for them, for domestic workers, which costs a mere 50 rand. So we, we don't look at it from an attorney-client relationship. We look at it from a benefit to society in those particular cases. So we have a look at all employees, temporary, casual, acting, probationary, managerial, and even illegal contracts of employment. Even foreign nationals come to us and speak to us on a basis where they'd like to say, we want to work here, we don't have a working permit, how do we do it? Now, even a foreign national with no working permit is entitled to the rights under the Labor Relations Act. 
So you see how complex the worker and the employer relationship really is. If you'd like more information about this, contact Michael Bagram by email, michael at bagrams.co.za, or call him. The number is in the book. Next week, we'll be looking at another aspect of labor law as it applies to either the employer or the employee.